Hey guys, look. It's like a small TV. It's so cute. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about how to get the best reading from your Merida Root ZX2 Apex Locator. So this is actually a very practical question that a lot of people have. In fact, a lot of people come to me complaining that their Merida Root ZX2 is not working and they send it to their manufacturers and oftentimes they charge them and most likely they're not fixing anything because when something's broken, it's actually not the unit, it's you, unfortunately. It sounds mean, but that's the truth. So in under, understand the best way to get a reading, you have to understand how apex locators work. So the most important fact in apex locators is that there's a common resistance from the periodontium and the mucosa. So if you have a file that sticks out of the apex, it is in the periodontium, so you know that you have a given resistance. So if you have some sort of instrument that can read that, it would know that you're out of the apex. So with a tooth, it kind of gives a sort of resistance or impedance to get to the periodontium. So that's how apex locators work. So now that you know how it works, you can kind of imply how the machine best reads a file in a canal determining working length. So number one rule, this is the most important part of the video. The most important rule is that the file that fits tug in a drier condition will give you the best reading. So let me repeat that. So if you have a tighter canal, with a drier condition, it's gonna read the best. Number two, this is the second rule, is that a root ZX2 apex locator is 100% accurate about 60% of the time. So I'm making those numbers up, but that kind of puts in perspective that you have to be careful to know whether or not you're getting any reading at all or a actual reading. For instance, a lot of times you might get your file in and it goes straight to green as if you're already at the apex but if you slowly move up and down, if the indicator isn't following, then it is not working. So you have to readjust to make it better. And I'll tell you how in just a minute. And rule number three is you have to measure multiple times. You'll save a lot of pain from taking multiple file shots or multiple cone shots if you can take multiple apex locator readings, which is very accurate. What I usually do is I take a reading at the beginning of the appointment and at the end of the appointment. So now with the three rules in mind, you can kind of imply that the easiest tooth to get a good reading is a necrotic tooth with more calcified canals. So that the canals are snug, no matter what hand files you have, and it's already in that drier state that gives you the best reading. So let's say you don't have that ideal situation where you have a younger tooth, open canals, and it's vital, so it's wet. It's not on that drier condition that gives it the best reading. Unfortunately, you have to remove a lot of the vital tissues to get an easy reading. So what I usually do in a vital case, and this is kind of how an instrument in general is I go crown down. So if I'm using pro taper files, I would use SX, S1, and S2 to about five millimeters short of my estimated working length with the digital PA that I got earlier. Once the vital tissue is removed, you can then take a hand file, which fits snugly into the canal and will give you a better reading. Let's say that you do that and you still don't get an accurate reading. What that tells me is that the file is either still too small or second, that the conditions are still too wet. Now, if the answer is a too small of a file, it's easy, just get a bigger hand file, like from a 10 to a 15. But if you do that and you still don't get a reading, what you wanna do next is you wanna use EDTA. So the EDTA, such as RC Prep, is like a perfect amount of wetness. It's not so conductive that it will trip it, but it's not so dry and pasty that I won't do anything. It's like the perfect condition. It's like a sort of insulator. So when I apply RC prep into the chamber, or you can kind of swipe through with your file on RC prep, that will usually get your reading. Now let's say you're not comfortable in going crown down to remove the vial tissue. If that's the case, you can kind of irrigate the best you can and suction it all out and then go in with your hand file with a lot of RC prep to try to get a reading. Now let's say you have the opposite problem. You have a very necrotic tooth, it's very dry, it's tight so the files is not a problem. In that case, you're not getting a reading, you actually want to add some irrigant, whether it's EDTA or sodium hypochlorite, or you can just use the RC prep 
or EDTA PACE in that case as well. So once I have the initial reading, I would instrument it to that point pretty confidently until towards the latter stages of my instrumentation. If I feel confident in the early stage, I would just wait until the very end to recheck. So the way I check at the very end is I take the rotary file one size smaller to check the working length. So if I finish with a 4004, I would take a 35 rotary file, use my hands to put it in the canal and check the working length instead.